All right, well, welcome everyone. First off, thanks for coming out. Um, anybody that can sit through Ward, me, and John has got you know pretty tough uh, character. But uh, so my name is Dan Walleen. For, uh, for those that I haven't met in person, which is probably most of you, so uh, I live in Arizona, not too far away, but it's freaking cold here. Uh, I was out with a couple other guys, and one's wearing shorts, and he's like. It's not cold. It's like 50 something, you know, and I'm like, dude, when you live in Phoenix, this is freezing. But uh, we are here to I'm going to just take in fact, what time is it? So I can kind of try to try to keep on track here. OK, so about top of the hour, eight o'clock ish. Is that all right? Um, do whatever. <laughs> uh, so we're here to talk. I'm actually going to be talking on this on Thursday. So I figured, hey, I'll just take some of these slides and, and we'll do this talk. Um, so uh, one of one of my favorite technologies out there right now is uh, Docker. And how many of you use Docker in here? Oh, well, geez, you don't even need me. I mean, it's like, I don't need to talk. So is anybody using it in production at work or anything? Okay, a few of you. So, okay, there's a lot of hands that went up. So I'm guessing a lot of you are kind of playing with it a little bit. All right, uh, so we've been using it in production for almost three years now. And it's been knock on wood. Uh, rock solid for us. Uh, we run on Linux VMs and don't have a ton of containers. We have about eight containers uh, running, so not very many overall, but it's been just phenomenal. So for those that are new to this, I'm just going to introduce really quickly here in the next five minutes, kind of, you know, why as an Angular developer would you even care, first off? I mean, we're talking JavaScript builds, so why would you care? Uh, and then uh, after that, I'll just show you how we could quickly take an app. It's going to be a pretty phenomenal app that uh, John and I built today during one of our workshops, our intro workshop. You'll see there our UI skills are just like the tops. Um, I don't know if John's in here anywhere, but he can uh, attest. Yeah. I just would like to give John credit for what I'm going to show you uh, because it was his Illustrator and Photoshop skills that got us to where we are today. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> John's already thinking of ways to get me back by tomorrow. <laughs> um, so uh, let me skip past this. If you want to get this content, this is, like I said, this is actually one of the talks I'm going to be giving here at ng-conf. Uh, this one will be the kind of longer one on Thursday. But if you want to write down that link real quick, that will get you to the slides. Um, Joe's still in the room? Is he gone? Oh, good. Then I can tell you they're not really finalized yet. I'm still kind of working on some things. But, uh, oh, you're in the room, though. <laughs> Kip's like, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so what we're going to do really quick here is uh, I'm going to skip past this because we're not going to have time to cover it all. But for those that haven't done anything with containers, uh, back in the day when you first got started, for those that are a little older, um, you know, we used these lovely machines and these just phenomenal data transfer machines or devices. Uh, what, I, what I love about this is, uh, if you can see up in the top corner there, it's a mini disk, right? And nothing ever went wrong, you know, deploying these, of course. And then, uh, you know, as the web came out, uh, some of you might have done Mosaic. This really dates you, by the way. If you know what this is, you're old, sorry. Um, and then, you know, to deploy, we had things like Hot Dog Pro. Anyone ever use that? This was like the bomb back in the day. I think this was uh, like an Australian company or something like that, and it was just awesome. Now I look at it and I go, how did I ever think that was awesome? <laughs> I mean, it's like Battleship Gray, but it was really cool. And then, uh, you know, deployment was pretty much as simple as this. And let's face it, for Angular, when you do like an ng build, technically it is as simple as this, right? You're just trying to deploy your dist folder off to a server somewhere. Okay, but for a lot of us, our, our build processes, our deployment kind of feels like this. You load up the boat and you hope that it doesn't sink before it gets you know, over to staging or, or production. Um, but with Docker, we can be a little more organized. So um, how many have more than just one RESTful service you're calling or GraphQL or whatever from your Angular app? Okay, and it's pretty common. How many are doing like microservices? Okay, so quite a few of you. Um, you know, the challenge there is if you're just doing the Angular part, okay, it's pretty easy. You can do ng-serve, turn on cores, you know, allow for your cross-origin requests, and you're pretty much good to go, right? But when you go to deploy, there's always the surprise. 
like, oh my gosh, they don't have the same version of the server in staging now. Somebody changed it. In fact, we were just, John and I were just talking about this with some others at uh, dinner. Or uh, you go to deploy it and security settings are different. Environment variables are different. You know, whatever it is on the, the different servers. And this has always been a big problem. There's Joe. I was just asking, where's Joe? Um, so what Angular can, kind of how it can benefit from this is with containers, imagine each one of those containers that, for those that are new to this, one of your RESTful services or microservice. Uh, one of those might be your Angular app. Uh, one of those could be even a database. Um, some people containerize their databases, actually, and you can do that. So why would you care? That's kind of the normal question. Well, because moving code between environments often is just not that fun. I think you've all, let me see, I'm all tangled up here now. I think you've all probably discovered that if you've done a, a bigger app. So one of the things Docker can do is imagine, you know, I need to get something from, say, China to the U.S., and one of you is going to assemble it. So I have a couple choices. I could ship everything in different containers, different boxes, and hope it gets there at the same time. Um, and hope it all fits together and works. Or I could get one of these big shipping containers, like on the last slide, ship that over to you, and everything's ready to go. So that when I move it, you could ship it from here, you could to Arizona, to New York, wouldn't matter. Everything you need is in this container. So this is what Docker is kind of all about. And I'm going to, again, skip through a lot of this because I just don't have time to do it all. We'll run some demos instead. So what are containers? Um, well, in a nutshell, you're going to have these things called images. So let's imagine that I, I prefer to run my Angular apps in uh, Nginx. Is anybody using Nginx in here by chance or HAProxy or one of those? Uh, there's some really just phenomenally fast servers that allow you to run your Angular apps. Now, you could use Apache or IIS or Node or whatever, but there's images out there for all those. And you could do ASP.NET Core on Ubuntu. You could do, I mean, you name it, you could do it. Um, what we do is we end up building an image or using an image, which I'm going to demo tonight. And then ultimately in our environment, we get a container. All right, and that's kind of what we're going to be about here in just a moment. Now, an image is basically, uh, it's kind of a read-only template. It's a layered file system. Think of a chocolate cake but without the frosting on top yet, uh, that would be an image. And it's not a VM, so a lot of people say, oh, well, Docker's just like VMs. No, not even close. Uh, for those that haven't used it, I can actually take an image, let's say, a, 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 well, it could be Windows 2016 server or Linux, and I could actually uh, put that image on top of a VM and just have it run. So you can almost think of it as it like fills in the missing stuff that the OS needs to actually run this server. Okay, and well, you'll see that here in just a moment. So this is something that you can either use one from uh, like Docker Hub, as an example, or other locations. Uh, some of you probably have an internal repository within your company. But what we do then is we take that image and we kind of add frosting on top. And that frosting would be the layered file system, we call it. And it's a read-only um, for an image, but it's a readable, writable kind of frosting layer they add for the running container. So it's really just the image, then they add this extra layer on top, which adds some readable, writable uh, type of functionality. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting hoarse. I've been talking all day with John. So. so what we do is we take a Docker file and we can build an image, and that means I could take an Angular app, make it as part of this Docker file, build it, and now I'd have, for instance, an Nginx with my Angular code or an HA proxy with my Angular code ready to go. And you might go, well, why go to the trouble? Well, now when I move this image between environments, the exact server version, environment variables, security, code, you name it, everything is ready to go um, inside of this. And so now I can just drop this on staging, drop it on uh, production, and you're going to get the same general thing. So here's what I'm going to demo here real quick. So if you're new to this, uh, you'll first have to install Docker CE for Mac or Windows. 
As a heads up, if you're on Windows, you will need Windows 10 Pro because you need Hyper-V support. Uh, if you're on Windows 7, you can use Docker Toolbox. All right. Now from there, what we would do is create a custom Docker file if needed. Now I'm just gonna pull one down um, given that I have about 20 minutes here and now I have like 13 minutes, is I'm gonna pull one down and just show you how to run it with uh, an Angular build really quick, just to show you how easy it is. And then you run some Docker commands or if you like VS Code, there's actually some uh, kind of just palette commands you can run to uh, start up a container and uh, build an image, things like that. All right, so let me uh, jump over to a quick demo here. All right, so this is, uh, for those that haven't seen it, this is called Docker Hub. It's hub.docker.com. And all I did was went in and searched uh, for Nginx here in the search. And if I scroll on down, the first thing they're gonna show me is, hey, these are all the uh, kind of versions of Nginx that are available. Now, I like Nginx Alpine. Um, it's one of the options you'll see on here because it's like really small. It's, I don't know, in the ballpark of 15 to 18 meg total. And so now when I wanna move stuff between environments, it's a really small image uh, to move around. It's really fast, really easy to use. So that's kind of the first thing. You can pick a version you want. Now, coming on down, I'm gonna run this in just a moment, but uh, then you'll see a, a Docker file, how you could actually build a custom Docker file from Nginx and see this copy command here? Well, imagine that is your Angular dist folder. All right, so it's the path to your dist folder, and then we can copy it into this particular path right here, and this is where Nginx by default anyway kind of looks for the static code. So a lot of people use Nginx for just like CDN type stuff. They want to share, you know, JavaScript files, CSS, uh, images, anything that needs to just be static but run really fast. Um, you could use this. Okay. So moving on, what we can do then is let me first just uh, try to fire up an Nginx server really quick here and show you how easy it is. So I already have Docker CE installed. You'll see a little Docker whale and you can get all kinds of fun stuff in here. But now I can run some basic commands. Now, uh, it, again, how many use VS Code in here? Anybody? All right, almost everybody. So, okay, well, that was easy. So they actually have some nice uh, commands you can run right from VS Code, so you don't have to really memorize what I'm gonna show you. But I'm gonna show you the raw commands because I'll have to admit that's how I learned it. <laughs> so I still like these. Uh, but normally what you would do is this. All right, so I would say, hey, Docker, I want to pull Nginx Alpine down to my machine. Now, I've already done that because I actually use this in production. So if there were any changes here, and I always, yeah, we'll give it a shot. You never know with uh, Wi-Fi. But if there's any changes, okay, there were some really minimal. You saw that? There's this layered file system. So there were some minimal, minimal changes, it looks like, from what I had to what's out there now. So now we have the latest version. Um, which, by the way, you got to be careful always pulling the latest version. Uh, but for this case, it'll work. So now if I say Docker images, now I have a bunch on here, but, oh, nice. Thank you, Adobe. I don't want to update right now. Okay. Um, here's Nginx Alpine. Looks like it's about 18 meg. Um, here's the image ID. This is the layered kind of cake, if you will. And now I can go in and uh, I can use this image. Now I have a bunch of other ones, you'll see. These are actually some of our production, or this actually might be dev, I'd have to look, but you can actually tag these. I don't have that on my laptop with versions. So here's another cool thing about containers. Not only can I ship Angular and my services in exactly the server setting that I need across all the environments, but I can even version those so if tomorrow we deploy a 1.0 version of Nginx with my Angular app, and I don't know, something goes haywire and we had a 0.05 version originally or something like that, then I can still have that image available and it's really easy to revert back. Now that gets us into other things like Kubernetes and some other options, but it's really cool that, you know, if, if I had to jump ahead really quick, um, there's one company I work with in Texas a fair amount and they never roll back they only roll forward. And so if they have a quick fix, they can update the container, run it through their automated tests, run it through their build process, and then have a new 1.1 version they could deploy. And you could run both at the same time. 
You could have 1.0 running, 1.1, 1.2, different versions of Nginx, Node, PHP, Java, you name it. That's what's cool. So, yeah. Only one virtual machine? Well, it depends. Uh, let's, let's for now, yeah, let's say that for now we just have one virtual machine. Now, if you scale out, you may have multiple. But yeah, let's just for now assume we have one. Good point. So I could run like 50 containers on one virtual machine. It just, I'm not saying that's a good idea necessarily, but you could if you have the proper resources um, to do that. Yeah, good point. So we've seen Docker pull. Okay, and then we've seen uh, you could do the Docker images to view your images. And now what I'm going to do is Docker run. And what I want to do is I want to run Nginx. Now, I'm not going to run with Angular at first. First, we're just going to run this container. Eh, that's not going to work, but um, we'll fix it. <laughs> I was seeing if you guys were paying attention. <laughs> so hold on. We'll do Docker. There we go. Spelling does matter in this world, too. So we'll do Docker run. And what I'm going to do is tell it a port. So I'm just going to do like 8080. Um, and what this will do is say, I would like to hit from my browser localhost 8080. But the container, this is like the external kind of phone, phone number, you could say, to call the container. What that's going to do, though, is forward it in the container to port 80 because it normally runs. Now, I could do 8080, or I mean 8280. So I could do this. And that would say, you know, just hit localhost on port 80 and forward it to port 80. But internally, it always runs on port 80 by default. Now, I'm going to, just so we can see it's, you know, not something secretive here, do this. And then you say the name of the image, Nginx Alpine. All right, so now Docker run on port 88, forward that to port 80, and then I would like to run this Nginx Alpine. So I'm going to hit enter. Now, this is going to lock up my console. There's a dash D you can do. Uh, dash D means detached. And that'll make it where the console comes back and they can interact. But this is fine. We'll just control C out of it. And now we'll go up. Let's just open another tab here real quick. And we'll go to, oh, that's 3,000. That's close. <laughs> Not really. Let's go to 8080 here. And there you go. And apparently I was zoomed in pretty big. All right. Now that's the default Nginx running. You know, I have no custom config file. I, I don't have any... SSL certificates included. I mean, this is just the bare bones Nginx, but all right, pretty cool. And just to show you that, yes, this is running, let's go on back here. And I'm going to control C out of here, or try to. There we go. And then if I do Docker PS A, this will show me what's kind of going on. So notice it says on the left there that we have this uh, 0CB38. That's the ID of the container. Um, we have, it's kind of wrapping here, but we have uh, Nginx, there's the command that started it. Uh, it was created 52 seconds ago. It exited, you know, a while ago now. And then they come up with these really fun names you can use to actually get to the container. I never use them, but you could. So now what I can do is the container kind of stopped because I control seed out, but it's still there. So I could start it again, do a start command, but what I'm going to do is say, let's remove it. And let's see, 0CB. All right, so Docker PS A. All right, so no containers left. I've, I've deleted everything. Now, that's just to get Nginx running. It's that simple. Docker pull and then a Docker run. And boom, you could have Nginx. And here's the cool thing. Here's my images. Let's go back up. This ID right here, EBE2. I could do uh, this command. I'm not going to, but I could. E, whatever it was, EBE2 or something like that. If I hit enter, now it's as if Nginx Alpine was never on my machine. It's gone, um, which is super cool. And then if I want to re-pull it down, I could. Now, what I'm going to do is I am in a very sophisticated Angular project uh, here. It literally is the CLI like default project and then some demos John and I did today. Um, so prepare yourself for awesomeness on the UI first off, but I don't want anyone to run out screaming. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I want to run this, but this time I want the Angular build to actually run in Nginx. So instead of ng-serve, which is great for development, not so good for production or staging or anything else, I want to go in and actually make it where I can say, hey, here's my dist folder from my ng-build, 
And now I want to run Nginx, point it to this dist folder. Okay, and we're going to create what's called a volume. This is kind of like, imagine a container is like a shipping container. It's almost like poking a hole and putting a pipe in the hole of the container. And that pipe then runs over to my local hard drive. So I'm basically linking my world into the container world so I can do development here. All right, so to do this is almost the same thing, really close. Let's do it one more time. So we're going to do Docker run. All right, then help me out here. How do I do the ports? Everybody's an expert now. Yeah, dash P, good. You've seen it once. That's all you need. <laughs> There's going to be a quiz on this after. All right, and then um, I can do dash D, by the way. That's detached. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, the thing is, you saw that by default, it included the Nginx kind of default HTML page. I don't want that, right? I want my uh, dist folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this thing called a volume, that's dash V, that kind of pokes that hole in the container and says, all right, when you're running, actually point whatever it is to this local folder, the dist folder that I have. And that way I can actually run Nginx for real with Angular, and I can do this for all my apps. Uh, all my RESTful services, everything can be done the same way. So in the uh, dash V here, what you have to do is give it, okay, well, what's the local folder? Well, I'm going to use a little uh, trick here to say go to the current working directory. All right, that's this $PWD slash dist. And then I hopefully in my clipboard, perfect, have this is actually where Nginx looks for the code. But we're now overriding it to say, yeah, don't show me that lame Nginx page. Instead, I want to point to my dist folder. All right, so let me make sure I, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. All right, then what do we put at the end? Well, how do we run it? Nginx, Alpine is my image. Now, for those that are new to this, I want to mention one quick thing here real, really quick is uh, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not doing Docker if you've got to type all that. The answer is you don't. Um, I use something called Docker Compose. We won't have time to get into that, but locally, I can get a ton of containers up and running in literally a matter of just seconds by running Docker Compose up, Docker Compose, well, Docker Compose build would be first, and then Docker Compose up. And then when I'm done, I say Docker Compose down. And I can create a YAML file, um, and YAML's awesome because it's all space-based. But... Uh, I'm joking when I say that, but um, if anyone's worked with these. The, uh, the file itself, though, it's, it's not that hard to create. It's pretty simple. But what's awesome about it is just with a couple commands, and uh, yeah, I got like one minute. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll run one more thing here. So let me try this. Okay, so we now have a, uh, that's the image ID. So you need to memorize those or you can't do Docker. So <laughs> That's like part of the prereqs. All right, so let's go docker ps-a, and what do we have going on here? Well, let's take a look. So 15 seconds ago, it looks like it uh, has been up for 15 seconds, 80, 80 is 40 into 80, and uh, you can see the ID, 809F, and it's Nginx Alpine, and then we can get even more uh, details here. All right, so now let's go back, and, you know, barring typos, which I have been known to do, um, let's run this. All right, and there's our Angular app. I told you the UI is pretty killer. Um, <laughs> it, it is pretty awesome, though. I mean, check this out. Huh? <laughs> blink, blink, blink. I mean, that was totally worth coming out tonight, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, that is an Angular app. Now, it is local right now. But that is now running in a real-life Nginx container. Now, yeah, there's, there's an Nginx config and some other stuff I would do to do this for real, real. But I can now make a Docker file if I want it, copy this code into the container. So right now it's kind of linked, right? And now I can give it to you, and you can have this up and running on your machine literally in as long as it took to download the image, which wouldn't be too long because it's only about 18 meg. All right, pretty cool. So let me go ahead and stop this one, and we'll wrap up with one more thing, and then we'll, we'll call it a day here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say Docker stop. And what's my ID? 809. You only have to type a few of the characters if you only have, like, one container. Okay, so now Nginx is now stopped. And then Docker remove. 
809. And then Docker PS-A, well, let me do that again. Boom, no containers. All right, so it's as if it never existed. That was just a real quick experiment, now it's gone. Now to show you a little more, this is also just a kind of demo project I'm gonna show in this talk, but let me open one. I didn't actually prepare to show this one, so bear with me really quick, because I'm gonna to have to find the project. But this is a little kind of mini microservice demo with Angular. And uh, yeah, I got the zoom going pretty good. So let me see, I don't know if I have this in my recent. Yep, I do, good, good, good. All right, that'll speed it up. All right, so this is a project, it's a little CRUD app operation. Uh, this is Angular, Postgres, PostgresDB, uh, MongoDB, Node.js, ASP.NET Core, all running in kind of a microservice simulated type environment. Oh, and uh, another one called C-Advisor, which lets you inspect your containers. So this is an Angular CLI project, very simple one. Uh, let me run off to the terminal real quick. And now, in fact, let me just really quickly show you this Docker Compose YAML. And you'll notice I have these things called services. Now, this is how like you go, at one point you go, okay, I have way too many containers. I am not typing Docker run, Docker run, Docker run, Docker run, right? Instead, I have an Nginx service with some config. There's my node, there's Mongo. ASP.NET Core, which is a cross-platform, the new one, Postgres, and then there's my C advisor, and then they all run in the same network, it's called. So here's the steps. Docker Compose build. I think these are already built. I hope they are, because uh, that part can take, it depends. Uh, it could take a few seconds, could take a few minutes. Docker Compose up, and then you live long and prosper, and everybody's happy. So let's go ahead and try this really quick. And since I didn't prepare for this one, here's where the fun will probably start. So normally we do Docker Compose build. Now I should already have these, so I'm gonna skip that step, but even if I did, they should be really fast because it caches uh, the layers of the cake. So it's actually really fast, but I'm gonna assume it's already built. Let's just go straight to the up. All right, now this is gonna fire up all my containers. Now my containers are launching. So there's Node, there's Postgres, and you know we'll wait, this'll take a few seconds because I'm actually simulating data I'm seeding the databases. I'm also running uh, npm install. So this is kind of a local example where in Node, I'm running npm install and uh, Angular, I think I'm just using the dist folder if I remember right. Okay, now this one is also using um, Nginx, you saw. So on this one, I could just go to local host and we'll hope, all right, cool. Wow, that's really zoomed. Can everybody see that in the back row? Okay, so here's the little app. It's a little just CRUD operation app with you know, some filtering and paging and stuff like that. But it is hit, hitting real containers right now. Um, and this is all, uh, ASP.NET Core on this one is the main backend, but I also have Node.js I mentioned, it's two RESTful services. So pretty basic, but still two RESTful services. And then like I said, Nginx and then Postgres and MongoDB for the databases. So kind of a, a mini microservice, a, a really micro micro example. Okay, pretty cool. Now I even have, I don't know if this one, I haven't looked at this recently, but it should run. Let me go to 8080 real quick. Yeah, and then this is another container that's running that I can actually go in and get stats about my containers. So you can kind of see here this uh, chart that's running and this will let me drill in and I can tell like CPU, how much the container's taking up on CPU, how much memory, uh, disk access, network, you know, stuff like that. This is, a, this is kind of like the uh, cheapest, easiest way to monitor your containers that are running. Because you always want to know, you know, did a container crash or something like that, because they certainly could. So it's actually pretty cool. You'll see they give you these, uh, you know, nice little dials here and something's pegging memory apparently. And, you know, yeah, I don't know why that's so high right now. It should go down. It's probably just what I have local. Now, that would be an example of actually running a more realistic app with Angular um, and Nginx. And uh, this code is all, in fact, I'll give you guys that link again. Let me do Docker Compose down. And done. All the containers are gone now. Um, literally, there's no containers left. They're completely removed from my system that, that fast. Now, think about how cool that is. And now, I have, if I have a production build of this, I can now put these containers up in one of the hubs, 
You could do, uh, you know, um, Azure uh, Container Registry or AWS or Google Cloud or, you know, whatever you guys are doing, and we'd be ready to go. And then you could pull those down to your system and run them just like that. So I hope that gives everybody a little bit of an example on uh, kind of what you can do. Let me, I realized I closed the browser, so let me see if I can get back to this link really quick. If you want that demo at the end, it's kind of at the end of the slides. I'll just give you the link to the slides again, right there. And with that, thanks for uh, having me and uh, have a good one.